the son of the band's fixer and friend Spanish Tony, made a dying disclosure that revealed intimate photographs of life on the road. Following the exposure of a family secret, a selection of intimate images documenting life on the road with the Rolling Stones will be on exhibit. After decades of dusting off in a loft in South London, the grandsons of Tony Sanchez, the Rolling Stones' fixer and close friend, found the private photos of the band. Sanchez, whom Keith Richards affectionately called Spanish Tony, was a longtime Stones houseguest who enjoyed unrivaled access to the group. Following his demise, his son Steve became the proud owner of the photo archive. Having been raised by his grandparents and mistakenly assuming Spanish Tony to be his brother, Steve's connection with his father was complex. He stashed his father's collection away in the attic of his Biggin Hill house, determined not to be reminded of the guy. Steve didn't tell his sons Nick and Matt about their Stones heritage until he was near death, and it was only then that they rediscovered the buried treasure of band relics. From their 1968 debut album, Beggar's Banquet, all the way up to their 1996 live CD, The Rock and Roll Circus, Spanish Tony was a member of the band. When the band left the UK in the spring of 1971 in response to the Labour government's 93% tax on high earnings, he also became a member of the group when they were living in exile in the south of France. Spanish unforgiving was Tony. Oh no, smash, among those. While the Spanish waiters were on the clock, he conducted a gambling casino. He dealt in drugs. As Keith Richards described Sanchez in his 2010 memoir, Life, the man was all pimp style and rode a two-tone Mark 10 Jaguar. In the 1960s and 1970s, when the Rolling Stones were busy being known as the Rolling Stones, Tony was busy taking pictures, and his work provides an unparalleled look into the band during a period when they could have done anything, according to Oliver Bayliss owner and founder of Bayless Rare Books. Fans of the greatest rock band in the world began to wonder where the originals were stored when Sanchez's biography, Up and Down with the Rolling Stones, came out in 1979 and a handful of the images surfaced. Before Steve Sanchez, Sanchez's son, mentioned the boxes of abandoned negatives in a loft, there were thousands of them. Among them were shots of the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, and Anita Pallenberg, a German-Italian actress who was the Stone's muse. The business that administered Sanchez's estate, Spanish Tony Media, is now run by his grandsons, who made the decision to start making his photo collection available to the public. From February 29th to March 5th, the pictures will be part of an exhibition called The Rolling Stones, elegantly wasted at a gallery in Notting Hill. Pictures of the Rolling Stones like these will never be seen again, according to Mr. Bayliss. Nobody else was able to get thus close to them and then let go so easily. These photos reveal a side of the stones that has never been seen before. Tony embodies, in my opinion, the spirit of the century he lived in. He was a captivating figure because he was a drug dealer, writer, and photographer. After months of poring over Tony's collection of hundreds of negatives and contact sheets, I am astounded by the exceptional quality and distinctive style of Tony's photographs. Collectors and fans alike are going to be blown away. This is a rare opportunity to see unique and unseen images of the band, stated Matt Dominguez, director of Spanish Tony Media. Oliver Bayliss's passion of the band, strong reputation, and thoughts on showing the collection elegantly led us to choose him among many interested collaborators, the statement continued.